We are here with Ira Childress. He is the athletic director at Okemos High School. We are here in February talking Black History Month, and you are the first athletic director, first administrator at Okemos is African American. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ira, for joining us today to, to talk about Black History Month and share your experience with us. Thanks for having me. What what, what's some of your background before we get into, um, you, you came to Okemos in, in 2013, Yeah, correct? 2013 was yeah. my first year here. Um, prior to that, I was at the NCAA National Office in Indianapolis, had a chance to uh, work there for uh, nearly four years, um, work with student athletes, coaches, and um, just it was just a great experience um, traveling the country and doing programming for the NCAA. Prior to that, I was at my alma mater, Fair State University, where I worked as an administrator for five years there. I had a chance to work with some great people um, in the alumni relations department. also did a little bit with athletics, and that was an amazing experience as well. So I went to Fair State, um, like I said, played, uh, played football there, mm -hmm. had a chance to win a, a GLIAC championship. That was a great experience as an undergrad. Also um, went and got my master's degree at Fair State University, so that's a place I call home as well. And, and what about prior to that? Where did you grow up? Prior to that, um, you know, just being um, at Baldwin High School um, was just an amazing experience. And where's with, that? That's in Baldwin, Michigan. Okay. With all the great people there and just all the uh, people that really helped me along the way. You know, I'm, cons I'm what you consider an underdog, somebody who came from the other side of the tracks, um, mm -hmm. if you will, somebody who wasn't supposed to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up um, in poverty. Um, I had um, a good family, and my mom was instrumental in everything. She made sure that I got a good education and stayed on me uh, day and night. So I give her a lot of credit to, to be where I am today. But but we didn't have a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people out there that said that, hey, you can't make it or you won't make it. Um, but she just kept me focused and kept my spirits up, and uh, here we are today. So I'm kind of a, um, what you call, like I said, an underdog, mm -hmm. or in, in my thing to, to young kids out there, if I can do it, you can do it. I think sports is a, is a good avenue um, for those with adversity to, to get out from under, from being a, a, an underdog and making it. Yeah, sports is a vehicle that can lead you to success. Mm -hmm. And it can really lead you to success because it teaches you a lot of core things that are very important in life. Mm -hmm. Time management, discipline, hard work. All of those things are things that you're gonna use on a daily basis that you learn with, through sports understanding how to work with people who may have different uh, background than you do. You know, mm -hmm. those are the things that, that sports teaches you. One of the things I try to express to our student athletes is use sports as that vehicle and don't let sports use you. Yeah. You know, you see some, some people out there, um, whether they're professionals or whatever the case may be, they let sports use them in a the sense that sports gets everything out of them, but they don't get an education. Sports, what sports did for me is it, it got me a scholarship to college, and I, I had a free education, and that was something that was invaluable, um, and I really used that platform to go on and do other things. But sports is a great, great vehicle. Now, you're in an art sports. There's more <clears throat> African Americans who are playing sports than there are in, let's say, science or technology or other fields that are professional fields that are out there. Was it helpful when going to Fair State Univers University? Because it's predominantly, um, there's not a lot of African Americans who go to Fair State. Uh, talk about that transition for us. Yeah, it was it was a tough transition, you know, from you know for me um, for a lot of reasons. Um, not just because there weren't a, you know a lot of um, African Americans, um, but it, but other reasons as well. But I just think you know from a, from African American standpoint, it's like I believe in certain situations, you know, we have to be better. 
You know, mm-hmm. let, let's let's be honest. I mean, this you know, we're still working towards you know equality in a lot of different areas. You know, obviously there's not a lot of overt racism as there was back in the '60s. So I don't want to you know say that you know I'm going through the same things that you know my grandfather and grandmother and and mother even went through. Mm-hmm. But there's still you know there's still racism out there. There's still people out there that you have to get through. There's still hurdles. So so I, but. But at the same time, I always felt like I had to be twice as good as the next person. That's the Mm -hmm. mentality that Mm -hmm. I took into everything. So I didn't want to leave anything for chance. So if there's a job or there's an opportunity, I was going to go in extra prepared and extra ready because my mindset is is that if it's even, I might not get that opportunity. So I better be better. How did you get to Okemos? What led you there? You know, um, I I wanted to come back to Michigan and and, in Okemos, somebody mentioned to me, said, hey, this is one of the best jobs in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I just applied and then, you know, and then I, and then I got the opportunity. And then once I got the opportunity is when I learned the whole dynamics of Okemos. I didn't know much about it until I got the opportunity. Do you remember who you interviewed with? Yes, um, Christine Cermak and Kathy Ash, and obviously we had a committee as well. And, mm-hmm. and I just remember um, after getting the job, Kathy Ash told me essentially, this is going to be a, a great job for you, but it's also going to be tough in some ways because mm-hmm. you, you were the first person of color to sit in that seat. Mm-hmm. And anytime you're the first of anything, it's, it's going to be hard. All eyes on you. Right. Right? right. People, All, are, people yes. are watching. Yes. And I remember initially it was tough. And I felt like people didn't really understand me at first. Mm-hmm. They really didn't know what, you know, what I was about. Um, and it was like they had to kind of learn and say, oh, okay. We, we see now. We see where, he, where he's going. But did, you have, did you have people say you were hired because you were African American? Did you ever have anybody no, say that? No, I didn't that have or? anybody say say that. You know, you know. But I also felt like there were some people out there that maybe you may know, felt that maybe way, felt that but way, but, but didn't say it. Mm-hmm. But but and that was and okay. That makes you that gives you that inner feeling of I really need to prove myself. Right, and that was okay. You know, but because yeah. I had that drive of saying, yeah. hey, you know what? You may be thinking about one thing, or you may be focusing on my skin color. But after a while, you're going to be focusing on the job that I'm doing mm-hmm. because that's what I was, you know, that's what I came to do, you know. And I'm all about diversity, and I feel like that's so important. So when that challenge came of being the first, I didn't just think about myself. Mm-hmm. I thought about if I'm the first African-American ever in Okemos High School in an administrative role, what, am I, what legacy am I going to leave for the people that come along behind me? Mm-hmm. And if I don't do well, and there may not be other people, uh, African Americans that come along behind me. So mm-hmm. I felt like I, that pressure I felt, and I, I embraced it. Like I need to do well, and I'm proud today to say that now we have an African American female that is an assistant principal. Mm-hmm. We have an African American superintendent, and that makes me really proud. Walk um, through for me uh, what the experience is like. I've lived in Okemos most of my whole whole life. It's not super diverse. Um, what what is that like coming from a diverse culture um, to to somewhere where where people are different? Yeah, you know when I my, my neighborhood everyone looks like me. You mm-hmm. know most of not everyone, but most of the people look like me. You mm-hmm. know I mean they were eating those same mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> You know, they were, they, were, they had that same government cheese that I had growing up. Wait, I mean, what were those? Because I may have been eating those too. You know, <laughs> I was so, poor too growing yeah, up. Yeah, so. so they had that. They had that. They had yeah. that same thing. So you had, you know, you had to learn that that's that's kind of the way, you know, what the culture that we came from. Mm-hmm. But when I came here and these student athletes, uh, I mean, and students and families, it was totally different. You know, um, it was a culture of, of people. Uh, when, you, when you look at the numbers, obviously, um, I think that there's less than 20% that's free and reduced lunch. I mean, so you're really dealing with um, a place that's affluent. You're dealing with a place that, that a lot of people um, have education, you know, beyond high school and into college and, and that sort of thing. So it, it, was, it was a great culture in the sense that um, it was, it was uh, advanced, fast-paced, and all of those things. Um, so it was different. 
But I also saw I also saw the same things in the student athletes. They want you to help them. Mm -hmm. They want to be coached. They want to learn. You know, so all that that stuff was the same. Mm -hmm. You know, so that and that that transcends any color or any race. So that was the, what I focused on. Is hey, you know what? How can I help these student athletes have the greatest athletic experience of their life? How can we as a culture, um, we only have like a couple minutes left, how can we as a culture, you know, help each other out or learn more about each other? Um... I think the number one thing is not to be afraid to talk race. Mm -hmm. So many people, when you say race, it's like, <gasps> they don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about race. I think let's, half the time I'm afraid I'm going to say the wrong right, no, thing. No, and most people are. But and if I do, I want somebody to point it out to let's me. Let's talk about our differences. Let's talk yep. about our culture. You know, I come from a different culture than you, but that doesn't mean that it's bad or yours is bad or mine is bad. Let's have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Let's have dialogue. Let's try to get to know each other. Let's stop with the stereotypes. You know, all those things. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first started as an AD here, we had officials that came up to me. I was standing in Oklahoma's High School gym. We had a volleyball match. And they said, hey, so I heard you were the new athletic director at Everett High School. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, actually, I'm a new athletic director here at Oklahoma's High School. And they both said, Did their mouths drop? they both said, oh, <laughs> you know, but because I was black, uh -huh. they were thinking, oh, he must be in the city at Everett. You uh -huh. know, so it was like, you know, but yeah. this again, you know, and, and they didn't mean any harm, but that was what right. they were thinking, you know. Yeah. So we got to stop with the stereotypes. We got to look at people for who they are, try to learn about them, and mm -hmm. then create great dialogue and that's how we move the needle that's how we move forward dialogue communication and learn about one another background and understand it. it's okay to be different we know we're not all meant to be twins mm -hmm. we need to mm -hmm. be different it's good to have different backgrounds if i don't have a diverse pool of candidates or people i don't have the best pool mm -hmm. the best pool is a pool of people that comes from in my mind from different backgrounds and different perspectives What's next at Okemos? What's next is we're going to continue to move, move and push the needle forward. We've done, we've done some really good things. We've got some good people that work there, mm -hmm. and they've been very supportive. But our athletic program will continue to climb and continue to get better every day and, and move forward. Well, Ira, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me and, and talking about your experience and sharing that, that with us. Thank you, Deborah. And I want to thank you so much for watching.